right, man. We back. Good fella Sports TV. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, bell icon button, share the video. Um, final thoughts. Crawford and the meme machine, Ingus, uh, Kavaloskis, I think his name is, and uh, the lightweight title fight, I think the fight of the night, uh, IBF title holder, Richard Comey, and Tiafimo Lopez. Um, if you haven't watched our final thoughts before, it is the uh, reaction to the weigh-in, which I'll speak on that in a second, and pretty much the last two cents about the fight, and also i link the prediction videos to both fights in the description, but uh, Crawford weighed in at 147 flat, the Mean Machine weighed in at like 146 and some change, um, you know, uh, both look solid, but the thing about the weigh-in was they had an early, it, I don't even think it ran on ESPN, I'm not sure, I didn't see nothing on YouTube about it, um, they ran it early, so it really didn't get no promo, but some people was complaining about, oh, they shouldn't run the weigh-in so early. Bullshit, weigh-in should be at midday Eastern Standard Time. So if it's out there in the Pacific time, it should be 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You know what? You shouldn't have all day to, to weigh in and kind of cut the weight. No, these fighters should be able to, you know, maybe miss breakfast and then come in at 12, make weight, and then eat brunch or breakfast and eat how they want to eat. These dudes don't know nothing about fight should nobody have to wait to know 3 p.m eastern standard time to to weigh in and then sometimes it'd be like it'd be hella late on the west coast so top rank got it right here that a lot and i know it's hard on a friday to get a weigh in early in these major cities but you know we really not worried about the crowd right we worried about the fighters and what's healthy what's healthy for the fighters and a weigh in should be at 12 uh, 12 noon high noon when your body's at the strongest when you have your actual weight midday. So this is our weigh-in is supposed to be at 12 or whenever it was. If it was any earlier than 12, then I'd be surprised. But I think it was like noon. But um, Kavilaskis, uh, like I said before, he got he a pressure fighter, but he not he not a, he not an all-in pressure fighter. He not Chavez, Madonna. He like to kind of operate like on the edge of the pocket and the edge of uh, being on the inside, but he, he don't really want to go all the way in, which he going to need to really step on the front foot and, and really pressure Crawford. A lot of times he like to sit there and be real, real patient. He throw one or two shots at a time. He not going to overwhelm you with pressure. He really want to throw the land. A lot of great power, a lot, a lot of great pressure fighters. You know, a lot of times they hit you wherever they can hit you at to wear you down the elbows, the arms, the solar plex, the, the liver and it's a lot of the old Mexican fighters hit you on the hip to debilitize your movement late in fights. You've seen Chavez try to do it to Pernell. Pernell was just a, a different animal, but that that's just the, you know, Ingus is going to have to be a hundred percent pressure fighter tomorrow. He got to use that, that good jab that he got and the punch that he got that can win it is the overhand, right? You know, he got a roundhouse right hand that Crawford has been hit with a lot. Diaz hit him with it. I mean, uh, Hank Lundy hit him with it. I mean, you know, Victor Postal landed it. And you can land it on him from the orthodox or the southpaw position. So it's something that a lot of them, his coaches, Bo Mac, Red, and Saul, they really worked on that punch. But that's a hard punch to get away from. You know, Madonna, he cleaned Floyd, he cleaned, excuse me, Adrian Broner out with that punch. Shane Mosley, he caught Floyd with that punch. When you bring that, that roundhouse over here and right, Marciano had a punch like that. That's a great punch to have because you can bring it from Kentucky and you're going to land it in New York. So Ingus need to throw that punch early and often. But the problem with that is, you know, Crawford will pepper you with two or three shots if you're trying to load up. So like Bernard Hopkins say with his, his, his lead right hand, he just don't think when he throw it. It's just instinctive. He instinctively throws the punch. And that's what uh, Kavilaskis got to do tomorrow. You know, he got to set, you know, set the jab up you know, working it up and down and maybe jab to the body, come over top with the right hand, but he can't sit there and wait for that punch all night, even if he get Crawford on the ropes. What he going to have to do is he going to have to really, you know, pick up his punch volume, work Crawford body, try to break him down to the body. But the problem with that is when you go to the body, you leave the head susceptible to, to counter shots and nobody really want to trade a body, a, a body, a head shot for a body shot. So that's why you see a lot of fighters reluctantly going to the body. But he got to take it to Crawford early on. He got to be able to cut the ring off and versus Ray Robinson. Robinson was able to walk him left and right. 
And, you know, in when you're dealing with a two handed fighter in Crawford, you know, nine times out of ten, he can go left or right the way he wants to, and that's gonna make it harder and harder to cut the ring off. That's what Victor Postal had problems with because you look at AJ and Ruiz, AJ was comfortably going left, he was comfortably going right with Ruiz. So, you know, when you got a guy that can move both ways, you know, really you gotta set traps. And how you set traps is it start with the jab. But if you know if you know you stepping you may want to step over and exaggerate your step to the right, knowing that he's gonna slide the left the left door, but then do like Canelo did with uh with Alara and you just drop that left hook or that right hook, depending on if you're a lefty or righty, uh and you anticipate where he's gonna slide out the side door at. That's how you do that. And eventually you seen with Canelo and Lara, Lara started to slow down. And that's why Lara stopped punching because Canelo started anticipating which way he was going to slide out the side door. And that's how you stop a guy like that's one of the ways you stop a guy like that. But you got to keep the jab and you got to keep the jab and you got to be willing to take some punishment when you walking in, you know, versus any fighter. So Kavalowski's really got to have good head movement. He got to roll some shots, but he's going to have to take some. But yet again, I'm telling you that overhand roundhouse right is going to be his ticket. That's going to open up a lot of things for him and his body shot and his jab. But he got to really close the distance and stay there and really make it a rough and tough fight and try to wear Crawford down and use his physical strength. He one of the stronger welterweights in the division, but we seen Crawford take down each one of the strongest welterweights in the division at, at one point, Jeff Horn, who legitimately ran Pacquiao out, out the ring, in my in my opinion. But Kavilowski is he gonna have to really, you know, not just fight at that 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 pocket in that inside range. He be right to fringe, just you know, just just waiting on something to happen. He gonna have to go balls deep. All right, <laughs> you know he gonna have to go balls to the wall, bro. He gonna have to go all the way in, <laughs> and he gonna have to go in there, and he gonna have to just, you know, make it a firefight on the inside, man. And that's what he gonna have to do, man. He gonna have to go all the way in, you know, and he gonna have to fight Crawford on the inside, bully him on the ropes, and that's just what the situation gonna have to be with him, you know. For Crawford, I mean, you know, he can fight, he can take it a couple ways. He can, you know, walk this dude like Ray Robinson did, but be more aggressive and establish his respect. When you're dealing with a strong fighter that like to come forward, the best way to do it is either you keep him off balance and you box left and you and you just box circles around like he did postal, and then you change the speeds up on him and hit him with some soft or some some soft shots and then mix in some hard shots. Or what you can do is take it right to him. You hit him with something that hard early on where he always going to be in the back of his mind that he don't want to get hit with that again. So if you able to have a, a guy like Ingus, you know, the Cleveland is on the back foot, you know, it ain't too much he can do, you know what I'm saying at all, you know? Um, so Crawford got a couple ways he can do it. He can walk him like Robinson or he can come out there and he can try to, you know, hit him with something early and push him backwards. But most guys like uh, Kavalaskis, you want to push them backwards, you know what I'm saying? Because most of them Eastern Europeans or Europeans in general, they got a tough time going backwards. You know what I'm saying? And they, they lose all train of thought going backwards. So if I'm if I'm Crawford, I'm thinking about, you know, coming out aggressive, you know, using, you know, using my angles, boxing a little bit. And then eventually, you know, kind of when, you know, Ingus, his 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 energy level drop off, then I think I'm going to take him to church and then think i'm just banging him out his frame towards the end so um i think it's gonna be an entertaining fight i think it's it's a better fight than people think uh Kavalaskis, he offensive crawford offensive i don't think it's gonna be nothing uh short of a great action well a great action-packed fight i don't think it's gonna be i don't think you're gonna see you know legendary because people already got in their mind that Kavalaskis is not good but if Kavalaskis, um if Kavalaskis can, you know, uh, come out there and he prove to be a, a you know, a serviceable guy, um, you know, people are going to say, well, Crawford was struggle with a bum. So, you know, I hate to see fighters in a lose-lose situation, but, you know, if Crawford can f some, somehow, uh, you know, may turn this into an exciting victory, I think a lot of people going to have to give him credit. But I like Crawford, I think I said in seven or eight uh, like I said, I put the prediction link in the description on the source link. But let's talk a little bit about uh, the fight with Tiafima Lopez, uh, the challenger taking on uh, Richard Comey out of Ghana, fighting out the what he fighting out Brooklyn now. Um, uh, IBF title holder. I think this is the fight of the night. You know, other than you know Charlo and um, 
in Tony Harrison rematch next week. I think this might be the fight of the fall, you know, right now, um, for sure. I think this could be the fight definitely of the month other than Harrison and Charlo. Um, but, um, you know, real talk, you talking about another fight, a fighter, uh, in, uh, Teofim Lopez, young guy. And out of the young guys, Devin Haney, Shakur Stevenson, Jaron Ennis, this dude is legitimately stepping up in world championship uh, caliber opponent. That's that's the real deal about this. If Teofimo Lopez beat Richard Comey, I think a lot of people got to put him as the number one prospect in boxing. Well, he ain't a prospect, but a, the number one young guy in boxing. I don't think there's no doubt in my mind that he shoots above Devin Haney. He sh and I love Shakur and Devin. He shoots above him. He got the most legitimate win. If he legitimately beats Richard Comey, especially if he stops him, I mean, you know, I you know, I just think you got to put him in that in that stratosphere. But he came in at like one thirty, uh, four point two, and I think Richard Com no one thirty point four, one thirty four point four, and I think Richard Comey, excuse me, came in at one thirty four point two. So they both pretty much came in around the same weight. They both look physically good. Richard Comey obviously looked more of the natural lightweight because, you know, he can make the weight and and Teofimo Lopez is struggling a little bit to make the weight. Um, he a big kid and his dad said he, they just really trying to run to 140 because they've been fighting at this weight for the majority of his boxing career going back to the amateurs, but both look good. Uh, you know, Lopez, he got a nutritionist and, you know, his dad was opposed to it, but he accepted it and he said he don't like nobody telling Tio what to do, but him, and that's the wrong mindset coming in. You know, sometimes you got to get people from the outside to, to, to really build a solid team. And that's one of the things that worries me about this fight with Tia Lee, Fima Lopez, that your dad don't know everything. And he ain't been in too many championship level fights. Andre Rozier is a guy that had been in a lot of championship level fights and a lot of championship level camps. And that's another huge advantage for Richard Comey having a championship level co corner and Lopez having his dad that seems to be a know-it-all. But I, in my opinion, he don't know it all. So, you know, that's something that people probably not talking about as far as the corners that Comey got the more experienced corner. He got he the more seasoned fighter. But the finish, like if 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 Lopez and I like Lopez, I just think he a little bit overhype. And like I said, a lot of fighters is, but I like Lopez. And if he win, I mean, he shoot as the, the top younger than boxer right now because he had a most legitimate win. Comey legitimately can make an argument he didn't lose. He got robbed. In Russia, and before that, he got a lot of people felt he got robbed versus Robert Easter Jr. on PBC for the IBF belt that he should have had. But he got real power, you know what I'm saying? He might not be the most technical guy, but you know, he got speed, he got length, he got power. He can knock you out with the left hook, he can knock you out with the right hand. Same with Tifima Lopez, good left hook, good right hand. Um, Lopez can catch and shoot a little bit, but Lopez, we got to see if, if he's gonna pull the trigger when it matters. You know what I'm saying? Because when I say pull the trigger when this matters, he might have to punch with Richard Comey um, to really get Comey out of here. And that's what Ray Beltran did. He kind of punched Richard Comey and caught him in between combinations. And he got his attention a little bit. But like I said before, Comey, uh, Lopez, them high confident guys. If, if Comey can create some doubt early on, like Mayoshi Nakatani did with uh, Tiafima Lopez, Lopez might crumble under, under the pressure. Zab Judah. Uh, it's been a lot of prospects, you know, Fernando Guerrero was another guy that was a hot shot prospect, Fernando Vargas. It's been a few guys that crumbled under pressure thinking they ready and they really wasn't ready yet. So, you know, uh, like I said, I really ain't got no dog in the race. I looked at the tape and I'm going to go with the more serious, the experienced seasoned guy and Richard Comey with the more experienced corner. Now I know that top rank is really hoping that Lopez wins so they can make a fight with Lomachenko, and that's what a lot of guys talking about. J Rock, a lot of other people on the internet, and that's Julian Williams, the unified 140 pound, 54 pound champion, is saying they hope that Comey get a fair shake. And everybody you already know that Comey may not get a fair shake here. So it's unfortunate when you know you got as a champion or as a challenger, you got to come into a fight and you got to score a knockout. But hey, you know what better way to win after the Heisman Trophy is served to 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 knock T. Fima Lopez out? So they should be training for a knockout. Uh, if I'm Comey, uh, I see that Lopez really don't like to set up shots unless that's something they worked on in camp. He he really like to look for one or two big shots, and that might be your opportunity to you know take a chance, punch with him, or try to catch him or try to catch him on the back end and counter him. So it should be a good fight. You know, whoever going backwards probably gonna be getting their ass whooped. They both can fight backwards a little bit, but the problem with Lopez is. 
he believed in his power to the point where um he believed he an a level fighter but when you just been when you just been knocking out guys you know that's he been knocking out lower level guys that don't work this is his 12 this is second 12th rounder um he went 12 with Mayoshi Tanaki but that was a different type of 12 Comey is a grown man veteran type of 12 round which if Comey can put some body work in set a high pace he may even just knock out uh Teofimo Lopez off of off of uh off of pace and off of just stamina you know he had camp with Ivan Baroshnik and guys like that but people got to understand sparring in a real fight is different you talking about 16 18 ounce glove headgear you know they might be telling Baroshnik not to go as hard on him or whatever the situation may be you know actually getting in there and and and, and dealing with the real deal is different and for Comey you know he got he got options he got options you know what I'm saying and they say he going to run and all. I wouldn't read nothing into none of that. You know, Lopez try to come out hot, take advantage of him. You know what I'm saying? You know, he going to try to come out swinging hard and make a statement. Hey, man, sit there, slip, counter, or punch with him. You know what I'm telling you? This dude has been on the canvas a few times, man. The Figueroa kid from Detroit right here in Southwest put him on the ground. He hit him with a straight punch while Lopez was trying to be offensive. Now, Lopez got off the canvas and gave him some good work, but Lopez will run into shots. A lot of times he's not coming off angles. He looking to land one or two big shots. And if you got a guy that's loading up, all you got to do is just run your combination. He's going to run right into the shots. Look at the fight he lost in the Olympics. That French guy who pow, 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 was running right into shots. So, call me. I'm not, I wouldn't be looking to load up early on. I looking to touch the body a little bit. And I looking to touch it with a little one, two. He going to be looking to load up. That's what uh, 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 Lopez always looking to do is load up with one or two shots at a time. So if you able to catch him loading up and just tap him with a couple shots and move, eventually, you know, eventually he going to get tired and punches going to slow down. I like a lot of body work from each guy. I think the guy that can go to, the, I think it's imperative that Lopez go to the body to slow Richard Comey down. So if it do become, you know, it come a good fight in the 12th, Comey done been 12 a few times. He more experienced. He got a grown man body. He can go 12 and, and, and get hurt and buzzed and bounce back. It's not known if you can. You can say, I sport 20 straight rounds with interchanging smart partners. But it's not known. So he need to equal out the, the experience going 12. He need to put some uh, water in the basement, as Teddy Alice would say, on Comey early and take advantage and kind of flatten his tires early. And then, you know, he'll have a chance late. But if he let Comey control the pace and, and Comey able to, to do what I said and, and, and just touch him with a few shots, you know, not load up on shots. Just take advantage of Lopez loading up, look for one big shot, and I work him and go to the body every now and again. Comey should come out with the victory if Lopez really special, his power really the truth, or they switched up some things and they're gonna work off the jab more, and they're not gonna look for the one big left hook, or they're not gonna look for the one big right hand, and they gonna you know they gonna set up shots with the jab, feint more, go to the body more then. His talent might, you know, prevail. I think most people believe that he a more talented fighter than Richard Comey. But Comey got talent. He got athletic ability. He got skills. He got power. But, yeah, it's the fight of the night for me, man. I got uh, I got Comey by knockout. I think I said the 11th or 10th round. But I put that prediction link in the description under source link. But I like Richard Comey uh, in like 10 or 11, whatever I said, in but around a 6 to 8 round variety. Uh, the Mick Conner fight, I really don't know much about it, to be honest um you know he he just is not a good fighter to me at this point um you know he's just somebody they're trying to manufacture because he from ireland but i've seen him fight his pro debut i'm I'm not impressed with him at all uh so i we won't even talk about his little olympic you know rematch he ain't that good but uh right now i like comey i like crawford but um obviously it did, wouldn't surprise me if uh Tifima lopez got the job done but, hey, don't forget we on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Reach out to the email if you got business question, inquiry, response, if video requests. Want to make a donation to the channel. That link's in the description. Best way to donate is share, share the video. And um, don't forget all my social media links are in the description. Email the whole nine. And, um, yeah, let me know who you guys got winning in the uh, in the comment section, how you disagree or do you agree with what I said or, you know, how it's going to turn out tomorrow. Don't forget it's on ESPN. Saturday night right after the Heisman, which I think uh, Joe Burrow's quarterback from LSU is going to go ahead and take that. But y'all know what it is. Good fellow sports TV. One time for the one time. Appreciate the love and support. And uh, y'all know the business.